baptism, not water baptism, but how we, through Christ, vicariously die with Him and live through Him. In other words, when Christ passed away, Romans chapter 6 talks about it, that we are buried with Him with baptism into death. When Christ died through faith, when you and I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. As far as God is concerned, the way that He looks at us and the way we affiliate our salvation with the death of Christ is that we died in Christ with Him, but whenever Christ was raised, we have been raised to the newness of life. So we associate our life with that death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and something happens on the inside of us. There is a regeneration takes place. Jesus told Nicodemus, Nicodemus asked the question, how can a man be born again? How can a man enter his mother's womb again and be born? And Jesus said, well, you don't understand that that which is spirit is spirit and that which is flesh is flesh. And a man must be born again in his spirit. In other words, when you and I were born, we were born dead. Literally, we were born dead. We were born in sin. What, what the Bible, what scholars and theologians would call original sin. We all were born in sin. For the Bible says in Romans 3 and 23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. These little babies that are around here, we look at them and we look at them in the, the eye of innocence. Innocence. But one of these days, they're going to grow up, they're going to reach the age of accountability, and sin, that sin nature is going to take over in their lives, and they are going to need salvation, just like every other individual there is. And Christ came and died on the cross for every single person that would believe upon Him as their Savior. Yes. He came and He gave salvation whenever He shed His precious blood on the cross of Calvary. He made a way for you and I to be able to go into glory. He made a way for you. There's so many things that He gave us when He died on Calvary. All the blessings that are mentioned throughout the Bible. The blessings that, that God the Father bestowed upon His Son Jesus Christ. All those blessings are given to you and I through an inheritance that we have because we have believed Oh, what Christ has done for you and I when He died on the cross of Calvary. That's how come I can have faith. That's how come I can have confidence to know that God is going to work things out. There is a tendency in us to get wound up in the flesh sometimes and try to figure our situation out. Try to work it out ourselves. Try to, try to, we, and that's what causes problems in our life. That's what causes anxiety. That's what causes fear. That's what causes uncertainty. That's what causes fights in homes. And that's what causes a, an unsettledness in our spirit is that we begin to lose confidence in what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. And we begin to try to work things out in the flesh. But God's way says, yes, come to the cross. Believe on me. Sister Claire said it here on tonight. She said it perfectly. She said, oh, don't pray, believe. That's what we have to do. We have to have a, a confidence. It's not that we're praying, oh, I hope God will do this. Oh, I hope He'll show up. It's that God is there and He's already provided and He's provided on mine and your behalf and we must believe Him. We must have confidence to know that whatever situation we're in, whatever it is that we're going through, we have the confidence to know that He died on the cross for us and that everything we have is found in Calvary yeah. and we can believe Believe Him no matter what. We know it's going to work out. Amen. More homes would stay together if we would just say, Hey, I'm trusting the Lord in this situation. More job situations would work out if we'd say, Hey, I'm trusting the Lord in this. Some of our health issues that we go through and we're battling all the time, we would work out better if we'd forget about the doctor sometimes and say, Hey, I know the Lord is going to work this thing out. Well, I'm convinced, and they proved that doctors kill more people than guns. Yeah, yeah that's a They literally do. They, <laughs> it's a dangerous thing. I, I, I noticed in the paper the other day that the, the president or whatever of Piedmont Mountain side down here just passed away this past week. And he wasn't old at all. He was a young man. I don't know what he died of, but I thought, wow. You know, God... Somebody said it's nine in the line. If your number's up, it's your time to go. But I do believe you can shorten your time here on this earth. 
You can shorten your time here on this earth by being disobedient to the Lord. You can shorten this time on this earth by abusing yourself. Abusing your situation. Putting yourself in a place that God would never put you. And yet there's people out there, even Christian folks, that put themselves in predicaments. They put themselves in, in situations that God never intended on them ever being. People put themselves under unnecessary stress at times. Unnecessary anxiety. Unnecessary drama. And the Lord knows I hate drama. I can't stand drama. You just sit still. Drama will come to you. But if you'll forget about drama and say, hey, I trust the Lord. I trust Him. I trust what He did for me when He died on the cross of Calvary because He, he sanctified me at that cross. He made me holy. He cleaned me on the inside. And He loves me. That's whenever we begin to realize just how much the Lord loves us that our confidence and our trust and our salvation will blossom and will grow. When we realize what Christ has given us when He died on the cross of Calvary, the things that we inherited, we will blossom and we will grow and we will understand that we're in His care and that He loves us more than we can ever dream of. He is an unconditional loving Father. He loves you. Just because you make a mistake, He doesn't wipe His hands clean of you and say, I won't have anything else to do with Him anymore. No, He's a nurturing, caring Father. And along comes the Holy Spirit and begins to work on our heart and begins to work in us. And, and the cross in our life begins to shine. And we begin to see that God has made a way for us to escape the situation we're in. God has sent the blessing and, and we've got to to learn to wait upon Him. We've got to learn to trust in Him. We've got to learn to have the confidence in Him in whatever situation it is that we're going through in life. And He will work it out if we'll yeah. just trust Him. Yeah. We've just got to have confidence in the Lord. And say, hey, He saved me. He'll deliver me. Yes. You know, I, get, I, I think so much about this all the time. Mike, we don't, we don't have anything that creates memorials in our life of what the Lord has done in our life. Now, some people do. Some people keep a journal. Some people keep a notebook. I used to do that. Whenever I pastored another church, I would keep a notebook. And I'd say, this is what I prayed for, and this is what the Lord did on this day. One of these days... I'm going to read those things. Or maybe if I'm dead and gone, my kids will read them. I don't know. Maybe my grandkids or something. Tristan found one of them. She accidentally snatched it up with her and took it and moved away and got to read it and got the ball and swallow it. Sent it back to me. <laughs> but I think it's important to grasp what it is that Jesus has done for you when He died on the cross. Now in the Old Testament, they would take that staff they would take that wooden staff and whoever owned that staff would carve the chronological blessings of God on their lives into that staff so that, so that any member of that family could look at that staff and they would see that, that carving that depicted that trial, that tribulation, that persecution, and then they would see the deliverance of God. And so that that's how come that's how come there was so much trust in the staff in the Old Testament. Was because they looked back at that and it was a written history of what God had done for them. No doubt in my mind, if you were to really seriously sit down every day of your life and keep a record, because God's keeping a record. Yes, and you were to sit down and keep a record of, of the, the troubles and the trials that you've been through in this life, you would see where God had delivered you. And you would see where He had delivered you in different ways and different times by different means. Maybe He sent an angel. Maybe He sent somebody. Maybe He created a situation in your life you didn't understand, you didn't want to go there, you didn't want to do it, but God done it. Amen. And God knows. God knows what you and I have a need of. Yes. He really does. We let fear well up in us so many times because we don't understand that our God loves us and He supplies every single need that we have. Yes, he does. That's how come whenever you get somebody's heart right on the inside of and, and they love God, they give God every single thing they got. I mean, they, they just say, yes, 
Lord, it's yours. My time, my energy, my focus, my job, my finances, my wife, my family. God, everything I own belongs to you, God. You just let me borrow this for a little while. But you are the husband over the vineyard. You are the master of this thing. Lord, it's you, oh God. That relieved me a whole lot whenever I figured that out because then I, when I started having problems, I quit saying, Bruce, I got a problem. I say, God, you got a problem. <laughs> I did. I really did. An old preacher helped me out one time talking about an old woman praying over a well. So they was praying over a well down in Mexico that it went dry. This woman was pastor of the church down there. And a bunch of them evangelist people had come down there to look at their ministry and everything. And they all gathered around the well real formal, grabbing their Bibles and grabbing their, each other in the hand. They were going to do this big formal prayer around the well. And the woman pastor walked up and said, God, there it is. What you going to do about it? And then she turned around and she said, let's go have some lunch. <laughs> And by that evening, water was back in the well. You see, that's whenever you say, Lord, I trust what you did on the cross for me, and I'm going to walk away from this situation. I'm going to leave it at the foot of Calvary. I'm going to leave it with you, and I'm just going to trust you, Lord. Whatever happens, happens. I'm just going to trust you. Amen. If we could see that more in our lives instead of trying to wrestle it and work it, and understand that whenever you died with Christ, that you inherited everything that Christ had and has. Yes. It belongs to you and I. Amen. That means when I get sick, Sister Lola, when I get sick, I say, Lord, it's yours. Yeah. I say, Lord, I put it at the foot of the cross. Lord, it's yours. My, do I instantly get healed? Well, sometimes and sometimes not. Sometimes I have to battle my way through it. But nevertheless, I trust the Lord. When there's a shortness in my finances, whenever I'm having problems meeting the bills and, my, and paying the bills, and, and, and last year's one of the best years we've ever had, and this year's been the worst in a long time. But I've had to say, Lord, I trust you. Yeah. Yeah. I just trust you, Lord. I just put my faith in what you've done and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to keep from doing anything stupid <laughs> and I'm just going to trust you. I'm going to watch, but I'm going to trust you. And the Lord blesses. You know, I was about to get excited today. <laughs> All started out Sunday. We had went and played in Blue Ridge. I left my truck at night's. Lois and me got on the gold wing and took off Sunday afternoon coming up here to get the Monday, Monday, sorry, Monday. We didn't come in on Monday. Got up here to Howell Bridge and Goldwing died. Had to call Katie. I thought she can't hook a trailer up. Caught my nephew coming out of the driveway. I said, go down there and hook a trailer up for Katie. She's going to break the trailer up here to get Goldwing. Told Katie to call me back. Katie didn't call me back. Come up here, stayed 100 mile an hour, broke tail lights, drug off the ditch, broke the tail light off the trailer. And you should do it. That's why I wanted her to call me back. Tell her how to drive out that driveway. That's okay. That's cool. Got the bike back home. Found out what was wrong with it yesterday. Going to fix it. So the day started out. And I thought to myself, you know, I thought, man, we got, we got two cases of hamburgers and two things of wings. And I got, I, got, I got to thinking, man, I'm just not sure we got enough hamburgers. So I was going to get on the Harley and go to BJ's. But then it started raining, so I got the truck. Well, I had forgot that we only put gas in the front tank. And I assumed there was gas in the back tank. Y'all know where this is going. So I'm going down the interstate, and I run out of gas in the front tank. So I flip to the back tank, and the back tank's out of gas. I coast down the ramp. I'm sitting on the side of the road, tapping my fingers. I'm like, everybody is gone. Tried to call Katie. I thought by chance she might be coming home. Couldn't get Katie. You know, I forgot about Lon them being home. <laughs> I'm sitting there thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, okay, it's 2.30. And I want to be gone in an hour. What do I need to do here? And I'm sitting there tapping. No, no, no. I'm thinking, Not okay. me. thinking, okay. I got to do something here. So I thought, I will walk to Home Depot, buy a gas can, walk down to the Texaco, get two gallon of gas, come up there and do that. So I did that. I got run over to 92. <laughs> but I kept thinking, I'm running out of time. I got to go. I got to go get some more hamburgers. Because I thought, man, I just need one more case. I was worried about it. 
I'm just that kind of person. I'm just worried about having enough. And so I get the gas in the truck, and I'm thinking, all right, we're going to go get some burgers. Now, I pull out, I get up the red light, and my phone rings. And that's a guy talking about how his marriage just went bad. And I mean, he just going and going and going. And I'm thinking, okay, well, I'll talk to him until I get over to BJ's. I take off the truck, and I hear this big racket. And I look in the rear view mirror and there's a BMW driving through a big cloud of smoke and I realized that that whole barbecue grill had come out of the truck and flipped over the tailgate and that woman in that BMW was driving through that smoke and I'm thinking to myself, I'm thinking, okay, well there's an insurance claim right there. But then I couldn't find the grill. I saw the bottom part laying in the road but I didn't see the rest of it. And I'm like, I'll call you back. And I'm hanging up. And I'm getting tense. I'm thinking, this is not good. So I just parked the dually in the middle of the road. And I'm like, where did that grill go? I'm looking everywhere. Where did it go? And it had hung on the tailgate and was hanging upside down on the back of the truck. And I couldn't see it. And I thought, God, there's got to be a blessing coming tonight because the day's been hell. <laughs> I mean, I was having a Randy Travis day. A rough one. <laughs> I'm telling you. Anybody ever have a day like that? I mean, you, you think it's going wrong and it just gets worse. <laughs> I knew. When I come in, I said, oh, David Smith or somebody cooking hamburgers, I will burn that place down at the rate I'm going today. There will be no chamber of commerce when I get done with it. I'm sure it is, But isn't it, isn't it amazing how that we can let the circumstances in our life turn our world upside down? And Christ just says, hey, trust me, I'm going to get you through it. You just got to do what you got to do when you got to do it and move on. Amen? God is a good God. Yes, is. Yes. You wonder, you know, you just, you just, you, you fail, and I do too, I fail to trust Him at times. I'll tell you something else that happened a long time ago. I had somebody call me one day from Missouri. And they said, Bruce said, I want, I want some of your CDs. We, we had about six or seven recorded back then, about half of what we got now. And um, I was like, okay, yeah, I, I can send you some, you know, later on. And um, I just thought, well, you know, they said, well, hey, I'm going to make a donation to your ministry. And I just thought, well, you know, that's somebody wanting a bunch of CDs for, you know, just nothing. And, um, you know, they might send me 10 bucks or something. So I kind of put it on the back burner. About two or three weeks later, I get an email from this guy. He's like, uh, I ain't got my CDs. And I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, whatever. I'll tell him I'll send them next time I mail out. In the meantime, all this is going on. There's a pastor called me from Cherryville, North Carolina and wanted me to come to a revival at their church. And they didn't have no money. It was a little bit of country church way out in the middle of nothing. And they wanted us to come to a week-long revival for them. And they didn't have anything. They didn't have money for a place for us to stay, buy our gas, or nothing like that. But whenever they called and asked, there was something on the inside of me that said, we'll go and so I made a commitment that day. I made a commitment. I told them, I said, hey, we're coming to your church to the Bible. And they said, well, we ain't got no money, but we'd really love to have you. I said, hey, don't worry about it. And I turned around to Lois and I said, hey, if we got to run this and on the credit card, we'll just run it on the credit card. We'll go do it. We'll do it. I made a commitment to go do it. We worked around there. Finally, this guy, flipping back to the guy from Missouri, he kept sending me emails. And he was getting hotter to call with emails. Of course, that just made me a little more hotter to call. So finally one day, I'm just mad. And I gather up our CDs, I chunk them in an envelope, and I write down his number and his address, and I took them to the post office and threw them in the mail. I said, there, 
Now he'll get them. I'm tired of him bugging me. And he sent those things off. Well, it rocked on there up to about three or four days before we were to leave to go to that revival. And still, we had no money to do this revival with. Didn't know where it was going to come from to get up there. I needed a place to stay. We needed some kind of vehicle we could drive to that church besides that motorhome because you wouldn't believe the parking lot of that place. You'd never got, you wouldn't get my newly in it hardly. It's just messed up down in a hole. Rocked on there and I'm sitting there and it's about three or four days before that revival. And this UPS man comes to the house. Well, I've left. I, I, I took off and went up the road and Tristan called me and said, Daddy, UPS just dropped by the house and left something on the front porch. And I'm thinking, well, I didn't order anything. And so I turned the truck around, came back home, and sure enough, there's a UPS box laying right there on the porch. And I thought, well, I didn't order anything. It had my name on it. I reached down and I picked the box up and it was empty. I thought, now somebody's playing a joke on me. There was a woman at a church in South Georgia that was all the time trying to play practical jokes on me. And I thought maybe she had just sent me something as a practical joke. And I got to looking at the, at the thing and, and it wasn't that. And so I, I, I tore the box open and lo and behold, there was that envelope that I had mailed those CDs in and it looked like a dog had got a hold of it and tore it all to pieces. And I went, oh no. That's that guy's CDs that I got tired of and finally mailed them off and they didn't make it. Look at that envelope. And I come that close to throwing it in the garbage. And then I thought, well, I'll never just look. And so I pulled that thing open and I took that old envelope that I originally mailed them CDs in and from a flower shop was a check for nearly $600. He had paid $100 a piece for those CDs. And the Lord spoke to me and said, there's your revival money. There's your gas money. There's your rental car money. And there's your money to eat on right there. Let me tell you something. God yeah. about that is God had started it in that man in Missouri's heart three months before that woman ever asked me. That just shows you that it was God because God knew what was going to happen in the future and old Bruce, old hard-headed Bruce, just stubborn. stubborn, yes, stubborn, old stubborn Bruce, he could not see the circumstance that was going on in my life and God was trying to bless me. I am convinced at night because of the death of Jesus Christ and us believing on Him and what He has done, God has got situations and circumstances going on in our life right now and we are kicking and screaming against the pricks and cannot see it. But God says, I want to bring a blessing out of what's happening in your life. I believe that. We cannot see it, but but God is bringing blessing. I count I count it a blessing every single time something happens. If it, it's amazing how many times that old truck is broke down in the driveway. <laughs> and I thought to myself, praise God, I'm glad Katie wasn't in it or Lois wasn't in it out on the road somewhere. If it had to break, it broke right in the driveway. Hallelujah. Yes. Glad it did it right there. See, God knows how to take care of his people. Yes, he does. But we gotta trust him. We got to look at Calvary and say, "Listen, He saved us there." And I've learned this. I've learned it the hard way. I'm still learning it. I'm still learning it tonight. I'm still learning to trust the Lord. 